Mail bag time again. Let's find out what's in these. So I did a video not long ago, a month or so ago probably, when I did some work on my quick 861DW hot air station because the pump, the blower unit had failed. Anyway, I found I was able to repair it, but I don't trust the repair, it may not last. So I picked up another pump, which should be exactly the same. Looking for any signs of previous use, looks like it's brand new. So this looks like it's the same setup, so I'm happy with that. So I now have a spare pump for my Quick A61 DW. If the repair doesn't last, I've at least I've got a spare. Always like to have spares. Just ask a wife. I'm known for having redundant systems and spares. Seriously, it drives her nuts. Okay, what are these modules? I think these are boost converters. I'm pretty sure it's a boost converter. So you put a voltage in, it boosts it up to another voltage. Now I'm pretty sure I got 5 volts. But I could be wrong. I guess the way to find out is to actually try it. A and B links are over here. Let's have a close look at these. A and B are both present. See that? They're both there. Which means... What does that mean? Well, the silk screen says the same thing. Well, that's bloody useless, isn't it? I'm going to have to try them out. I'm pretty sure they're 5 volt boost converters. Pretty sure that's what they were, because this came about from a project I was working on. when I needed one, and I actually had one left, I think, but I realised, oh, I need to get some more. And these are much smaller. So in the last mail bag I showed some ESP32 modules with UFL connectors on them. And there's an antenna for it. Wi-Fi antenna. I can look at that project again now and actually see if I can improve it. Now I've got an antenna, got a better module. Should be good. Three modules. Electronic switch. Ah, that's right. Okay. It's all part of this project related to these, actually. So basically what I did is I built myself a sensor on my mailbox because my mailbox is out by the road because I live rurally and I wanted to have it so it sends a signal so it tells you when the postman's been and I've got mail in the mailbox that's actually working I've got that project working but I had to do a lot of hacking around with it to make it work it took me days because I didn't quite have the right stuff I had to basically make it work I had to hack the relay and that sort of stuff and it was a bit of a pain so I've got these little switch modules here it's all part of the project there's basically a fed or MOSFET, I should say, with a little switching system. I ended up using a transistor switch and stuff like that, which wasn't quite as good. Basically what I wanted to do is not actually have a relay, I wanted to use a MOSFET, and this is what this will be used for. So if I do revisit that, which I likely will, because this antenna is also part of that project, then I could use a MOSFET switching to turn the power off. The idea is that when it's idle, the power is actually turned off completely. It's not, it's not in a sleep state, there is no power, it is off. And when the mailbox gets opened, it activates a switch which provides power. The ESP32 then gives its own output from a GPIO pin to latch on its own power supply. And then once it's finished doing what it's doing, which is actually connecting to my Wi-Fi network and sending me an email, then it turns its own power back off again once it's finished. This would be much better than a relay. That's what I got these for. And these were to allow for battery voltages. So these things here were to allow the fact to run off a single cell battery. I'm using an 18650 battery. So that voltage could go down to those last 3 volts. And it's not quite enough, so I put on a 5 volt boost converter, and that's what these are, I think, 5 volt ones. So that can then boost the battery voltage up to 5 volts, that's then dropped back down again by the ESP32's own voltage regulator. Okay, not perfectly efficient, but at least then it's getting all the voltages it expects to get. It doesn't matter what the battery voltage is, it will just work regardless. So anyway, that's the reason that's about. When I revisit this project, I'm actually likely to do a video on it and actually show you how I built it. I think that might be quite interesting. So this is a prism. So I actually saw someone did a video on light diffraction which is what prisms are basically used for, in order to detect wavelengths of light. If 
from a known source and you can use a bit of software to calibrate the output from a prism by using a standard web camera like a basic web camera and I actually want to do that because I actually want to have a spectrometer basically I'd like to have one but they're really expensive to buy so that's why I don't have one because they're just ridiculous money I think it was Diode Gone Wild is the one which did that I think that was him if it was I'll chuck a link down below or something if I forget please remind me I'll chuck one down in the comments so he basically showed how to make your own one using a prism by showing light through it a webcam and a little box to put it all in so I've got a couple of prisms so the idea is I can replicate what he did and give myself a spectrometer for very little money I've got a few webcams laying around there will be links for most of these things down below too if you're interested like the prisms might be something you'd be interested in. certainly he did a really good job in that video and showing how to do it what the hell is this? <laughs> Hmm, this looks interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, it's another crimper. I've been getting a bit carried away with crimpers recently. I bought a big one not long ago. And this is the next size up from one I've already got. So I've got some slightly smaller ones. I didn't have quite this size. I thought I'd get one of these. And it's basically for these kinds of connectors where you have these joiners basically, barrel joiners. So you can um, splice two cables together end to end, crimp them together. And I'm guessing that's what the heat shrink is for, to cover them over. I don't know about that being the worst thing, but anyway, it doesn't matter, free heat shrink. Um, but yeah. I wanted some of these. It's something I was working on, what was it? I know what it was now. I was converting a UPS. I've actually done a video on this before, a couple of years back, probably about three, four years ago now. I have a fairly sizable UPS, but the SLA batteries you put in those things, just don't bloody last. It lasts a year, they're no good. And it's extremely expensive. So what I ended up doing is I got some old gel batteries from my motorhome, which were not good enough to use in the motorhome anymore, but they're still pretty good. They're still usable for other things. What I ended up doing is I hooked up those two drill batteries, because they're 130 amp hour batteries at 12 volts, two of them. And you put them in series to make 24 volts, which is what this physical UPS ran off. I did a video on that. So basically I've got these massive batteries running this UPS, and the thing lasts for hours. You've got a power outage. The thing just runs and runs and runs, and it's just fine. It, it, it's really good. And they last for years. I've only just replaced the ones on my one which I actually did that modification on that video. They lasted, say, probably four years, and that's after I took them out of the motorhome, after they weren't good enough for the motorhome. So the batteries were about eight, nine years old at that point when I replaced them, and that was doing pretty well. Because I'd replaced the batteries in the motorhome at that time, those ones have just started getting old, and those have just been replaced. And so I took the old batteries, which have been replaced again, and sorted them over, and I've still got two good batteries well, too old, but still fairly good batteries. So I did the same conversion again on another UPS, exactly the same UPS actually, exactly the same style, same brand, same manufacturer, the same manufacturer, same model actually, exactly the same one. Did exactly the same thing, but I realized I didn't have any splices for that size cable, like eight gauge cable. I wanted to splice cables end to end because to join the cables that went to the batteries originally inside the unit, which I only probably put 10 gauge actually, probably less than that, probably 10 gauge inside it, but I was putting out 8 gauge coming outside because I was obviously making them longer. I realised I was actually really short of connectors to do that with, so I did manage to do it, but I wanted some of these, so I've got some of those and a crimper to go with them. Check out the videos down below for anything else you might be interested in. Subscribe if you want to subscribe, right there. Click the bell icon too, so you get notified. Over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help me to buy things like prisms. Or free heat shrink. Because, yeah, anyway, whatever. Bye.